All right, so problem three says, what is the solution to, of the system and you're allowed to use any method? So uh, I've chose, I made three problems up for these that um, there's, each one of them has a different preferred method. So all three of them you'll come to see, why is this a good method to use? This first one, the method that I'm gonna use is substitution and I'll show you why. This right here, it just says x equals. That makes it really easy to substitute in um, 2y plus 4 for x because it's already solved for. So I'm going to take 2x minus 5y equals 5. And where I see x, we're going to put in what x is equal to, 2y plus 4. And let's see, 2y minus 5y, I'm sorry, 2x minus 5y, so 2, parentheses, 2y plus 4, minus 5y equals 5. And now I'm going to distribute through. 2 times 2y is 4y, 2 times 4 is 8, minus 5y equals 5. Combining like terms, what are the like terms? The y terms, 4y and negative 5y. They're both y terms. They combine to be negative y plus 8 equals 5. And now when I subtract 8 from both sides, you get negative y equals negative 3. And if you divide by negative 1, you get, I ran out of space here on the bottom, sorry, but you get y equals 3. So substitution was the best one to do on that one because of this already solved for x bit, okay? Um, I won't do the proofs, but I'll finish this problem out so you can find the solution. I'm gonna take one of the problems and let's use this first one, x equals 2y plus four. And uh, one way that it also is convenient in this way because it already says x equals, we can now say when we substitute y for what it's equal to, in this case, it's equal to 3, then it'll already tell us what x equals because it was already solved for x. So x equals 6 plus 4, or x equals 10. So then we get as an ordered pair solution 10, comma, 3. So just to recap, I used substitution when I was allowed to choose any method because substitution is easy when you already have one of the equations solved for one of the variables, in this case. So for 3b, can you guess which method I'm going to choose? Yep, that's right. I'm going to choose graphing. The reason that I'm going to choose graphing is because we already have both of these equations written in slope-intercept form. And when equations are in slope-intercept form, they're really easy to graph. You can simply take, I'm going to do the first equation, the y-intercept, and we have a y-intercept of 7 right there. really want to make it accurate, so 7, where I just put that red dot. And then we have a slope here. As you can see, it says negative x. That means negative 1x, or negative 1 over 1. So rise negative 1, run 1 and put another point there. And we can keep doing that if we wanted to extend points a little bit further apart. There, and there, and there. Keep rising negative one, running one, to get points further apart. You can see they're all falling in a line. I actually have a drawing tool that I can use, and we get this out of the way, and I'll draw this line right here, making sure they're going through those points. accurately and now I got to do the same thing for the other one so I will go to oops um, so I will go to 2 because that's the intercept and I'm gonna use red points again I'm gonna go to the intercept of 2 and now from that point, I need to rise to run three. And you can see this point right there is where they're going to cross. But I'm going to put several points. 
going to rise to run three, put that point there. Rise to run three, put that point there. Rise to run three, put that point there. And when I connect them with my tool, you can see that they are crossing at this point right there that I'm marking in green. And what are the coordinates of that point? The coordinates of that point are 3, 4. So 3, 4 appears to be our solution. And you know what you should do? You should do a proof. You should do a proof on both of the equations and check to see that it works. Um, and if you find that I made a mistake, let me know, and I'll give you bonus points. All right, for this, we're going to do elimination because you can see that we have exactly 4x here and negative 4x here. That makes elimination a really convenient method to use. So we're going to sum these together, and 4x and negative 4x goes away. They cancel out. So And look what happens. 2y plus negative y leaves you with just y, and negative 6 plus 11 equals 5. You've already, just by adding them together, solved for y. That was super easy and convenient because we used elimination. Okay, so I know that some of you have expressed that elimination isn't your favorite, but you should understand that in some cases it's actually the best method. Okay, this is a good example of it. So now you've got to solve for the other variable. So we're going to take negative 4x minus y equals 11 and then substitute in negative 4x minus 5 equals 11. And let's add 5 to both sides so that we get negative 4x equals 16. And we will then divide both sides by negative 4, leaving us with x equals negative 4. Okay, so it looks as though we've got an ordered pair solution of negative 4, comma, and of course you should do a proof you should do a proof to check that on both of the equations